This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. The upcoming showdown for undisputed heavyweight supremacy between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk is quickly approaching, with their May 18th date just around the corner. And I have seen one question being asked more and more often as we get closer to the big day. Will Alexander Usyk get a fair shake against Tyson Fury? Honestly, I've been a boxing fan long enough that I can understand the concern going in. For starters, as much as we all love boxing, we cannot pretend that the sport does not have a long, rich history of shady, questionable, and controversial decisions that are historically predicated on either utter incompetence or perhaps outright corruption. We need look no further than the controversial draw that took place last time we had a long gap without an undisputed world heavyweight champion, the first bout between Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield. In the case of Fury and Usyk, Fury is the clear A-side attraction, reportedly earning considerably more money than Usyk for their undisputed clash. On top of that, Usyk has already twice beaten Anthony Joshua, and if there is one superstar attraction in the heavyweight division these past several years, it has been Joshua. He has unquestionably been the biggest draw these past several years in the heavyweight landscape. Now AJ is on a nice little four-fight winning streak since he was twice bested by Usyk. And I don't think it's a coincidence that those last two wins came against common opponents with Fury. Not only were Otto Valine and Francis Ngannou two guys who provided a difficult challenge for Fury, but AJ brilliantly executed the play in one-upmanship when he made easy work of two guys who gave Fury some trouble. Taking this line of thought further, the big bankroll behind all the recent heavyweight boxing activity is Turkey al Sheikh. He has gone on record saying he is potentially interested in staging a bout between Fury and AJ down the line. AJ has expressed he is interested in such, and he has indeed carved out his recent streak in anticipation of Fury winning the Usyk rivalry. Fury would undoubtedly be down for it too, because despite the fact Usyk has already proven to be the superior heavyweight winning twice, AJ still remains the huge draw. Add to that the fact that AJ twice failed in his efforts against Usyk, one would think the man for a third fight between Usyk and Joshua is on the lackluster side. Been there, done that. But a potential showdown between Fury and AJ is one that has been talked about for years, and it would still undoubtedly be the single biggest fight that can be made in all of boxing today. It's pretty simple for all to see that, in an ideal scenario, if you're the powers that be behind the scenes, Fury winning the Usyk rivalry would result in a new rivalry that would almost certainly be even grander in magnitude, whereas an Usyk victory would lead to an understandably far less desirable third act in the been there, done that territory, at least in terms of how Joshua potentially figures into the championship picture. So if you are Alexander Usyk, you have to be thinking that you need to win big and win decisively, especially in the event the scales might be tipped in favor of Fury. Then even though Usyk was named as the rightful winner in the rematch, he was only awarded a split decision. One judge inexplicably scored the bout in favor of AJ, which is a real head-scratcher. One would need to get involved in some complicated mental gymnastics to justify Joshua winning seven rounds in that one. In my opinion, AJ put up a stronger effort in the rematch, but Usyk unquestionably won the fight. That type of thing exudes A-side favoritism and A-side privilege, which reminds me a bit of the perception of Canelo Alvarez who despite not being a heavyweight, is undeniably one of boxing's bona fide superstars today. Canelo has what one might refer to as a judge-friendly style. There is this perception that Canelo is often the beneficiary of at least one judge scoring a fight too widely in his favor. The 117-111 card in his split decision win against Arislandi Laura. The wide scorecards in his victory against Miguel Cotto. 
the 118 to 110 card in his first bout with Gennady Golovkin, the ridiculously tight cards in his loss against Dmitry Bivol, and then even the one judge who scored his loss against Mayweather even at 114 apiece. Canelo is a boxer who is viewed as having A-side privilege. Many view Fury in the same light here, which is the reason, I think, why the question about whether Usyk will get a fair shake has become more widespread as we get closer to the big fight. In the case of Fury, however, he doesn't exactly have that same track record as Canelo. Sure, early in his career, some people will point at that first fight with John McDermott, where a lot of people believed Fury was very fortunate to win that one. Beyond that, the only other conceivable example would be the 10-round split decision win against Ngannou, where a lot of people thought Ngannou deserved to win. Personally, I thought Fury edged it, despite looking poor. So I did not see it as the egregious decision that many did, but the perception does still persist among many, and perception is reality. Hence the influx of people asking whether Usyk will get a fair shake here, which I do believe is a valid question. Others will point to the fact that many ringside physicians or refs may have stopped the fight for the bad cut against Valeen, and others say that with another ref, Fury may have been knocked out in his first fight against Wilder. That's certainly true, I think. With a different doctor? Sure, that fight against Valeen could have been stopped. And with that 12th round knockdown he suffered against Wilder, another referee absolutely could have waved it off there. But the fact that neither of those fights were stopped isn't indicative of A-side favoritism. A lot of things boiled down to a judgment call on the spot. The same thing was true with the low blow controversy with Usyk and Dubois. With a different ref, that could have been ruled a legal shot in the heat of the moment, but it wasn't. These situations were all judgment calls that went the way they did, balls and strikes. And that's another big consideration here too. In addition to questions about whether Usyk will get a fair shake from the judges scoring the bout, the referee will undoubtedly play an important factor in all this too. Bob Dylan once wrote and sang that, in Jersey anything's legal as long as you don't get caught. Many believe that Tyson Fury views the sport of boxing as if it were the great state of New Jersey. And to be sure, since joining forces with Sugar Hill, Fury has shown a greater reliance on being physical and fighting in tight quarters where he can impose his size and weight on an opponent. But that again boils down to the judgment of an individual referee and his interpretation and enforcement of the rules. But on this point, things cut both ways. Will we have a referee who allows a lot of holding and clinching, like when Vladimir Klitschko beat Alexander Povetkin? Or will we have a referee who is quick to split them apart, like when Roy Jones Jr. beat John Ruiz? The answers to these questions might matter, depending on the referee's judgment on this particular occasion come fight night. Bottom line for me, I have watched enough boxing over the years that concerns like this are certainly valid. The powers that be would naturally love for Fury to win the Usyk rivalry, so that we can finally get an even bigger rivalry between Fury and AJ. That said, however, I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt here. If Turkey Al Sheikh wants boxing to grow in Saudi Arabia, then the competition needs to be on the up and up with no shenanigans. Historically, this has not always been the case in boxing, but call me an optimist, I expect Usyk will indeed get a fair shake, and I certainly friggin' hope that he will. Full disclosure, I still believe Fury will win, but not because I want him to win and not because I want my prediction to be right. I honestly don't care about any of that. I'll gladly admit it whenever I'm wrong about a prediction. The reason I picked Fury is because I honestly believe he will win. But what the hell do I know? I ain't no Quasimodo over here. I don't know shit about boxing. I'm just fired up to see the fight that hopefully produces a new undisputed world heavyweight champion for the first time in almost a quarter century. And whoever wins, I hope we get a fairly fought contest with no controversy whatsoever, whatever the verdict. Best of luck to both Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk.
I'm fired up for the fight. Do you think Usyk will get a fair shake? Please share what you think in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this.